Hey everyone, Redbeard here back at it again, and uh, today I already did a video, but <laughs> we're going to do another one. Tamarcan the Maggot Lord blog came out today, so we're just going to read through that, uh, go over all the units, go over some of my thoughts, and then at the end I might go through some memes I found for this Thrones of Decay reveal. So Tamarcan the Maggot Lord. Tamarcan is rumored to be many things, a monstrous warlord and arrogant commander with Nurgle's favor, a hideous, mutated, giant corpse maggot. Rumors aside, one thing is for certain, an army is gathering in his name, and even the Elector Counts themselves will have their resolve pushed to its breaking point when it arrives. At a glance, here's what Tamarkan brings to the table. He's tanky, the combined durability of an ogre infested with a corpse maggot of Nurgle makes this legendary lord tough to kill. He's a hard hitter, wielding an axe with great bullish strength. This unit hits especially hard with his high armor piercing damage. Bubelos. Tamarkin can be mounted atop the unique toad dragon Bubelos for aid in combat and traversal. Tamarkin's chieftains, a unique campaign mechanic focused on recruiting the strongest warriors around and earning their fealty to achieve ultimate victory. Which, this part's going to be really interesting. I can't wait to re read over that with you guys. Uh, which, this is the first time I'm reading this, by the way. <laughs> so, it's making the other video when this came out, or when I realized this was out. Um, so, bear with me if I have to stop at any point and, you know, just kind of process some things. Uh, okay, so continuing. As a true reveler in Death and Decay, Tamarkan the Corpse Maggot once burrowed into the flesh of other mortals to become their puppet master, never finding the perfect match until now. Adoring the power that the mass and strength of an ogre body brings him, Tamarkan grew attached to the only form he commands today, the body of the ogre tyrant Karaka Breakmountain. So, right there, they're just saying he's not going to have any sort of transformation ability. Um... I think they're going to go on to say that he has like a death ability, which, let's read on. On the battlefield, Tamarkan has a suite of abilities at his disposal. First up, Feast of the Maggot Lord. Here we go. A passive ability only triggered upon his death as a last ditch attempt to cling on to the margins. Uh, cling on to the margin delivers serious damage to the victim. Last to cling on the margins. Whatever. Uh, outright killing those below a certain health threshold and granting Tamarkan a second win to get back into the fray. So, I, <laughs> instead of dying, he'll <laughs> just, if there's a, I guess a certain enemy near him, he'll just <laughs> sap their health and come back, which is awesome, amazing, that's a great interpretation. I'm so, so happy about that. I love that. Uh, <laughs> great job, CA, with that one. Uh, okay, with Nurgle's favorite son, this active is a new ability. This active ability grants him melee defense and increased ward save. And the Rotting Host passive ability decreases the weapon strength and leadership of those within 30 meters of Tamarkan, the latter of which can be decreased even further with an Ogre Kingdom classic, Arspelger. Nice. For those that still dare face the Maggot Lord, his Black Cleaver active item will ensure they regret it. Ooh. Granting magic attacks, significantly increasing armor piercing damage, and a boost to base weapon damage for allies within range. Besides that one little, like, margins, I, I think they just you need to take a look at how they wrote that sentence. Um, anyway, <laughs> besides that, like I love how they delivered this, uh, just the information about how he works. Uh, as well, well put. Okay, so here we go. Tamarkan's chieftains. Yeah, so let's just look at this image real quick. So, oh, so this looks like, like a Marcus Wolfhart uh, his hunters type mechanic uh, that we've seen in the game before that I've suggested that Archaeon needs and also if we ever get Joseph Bugman he would be good to have like a Bugman's Companions type mechanic like this too oh this is awesome oh I'm so happy about this again if you're listening to yeah, Archaeon 
give Arcan's lieutenants this mechanic. Or if a modder's listening, like Arcan's lieutenants, Vardek Krom, uh, God, I don't know all of them off the top of my head. Hargreth, the blotted one for corn. Vardek's undivided. Um, Vandra, the majestic, but later taken by, over by Steercar and the Swords Veneer for Slanesh. Um, Vintor, the tainted for Nurgle. And oh, Melek, the changer for Zinch. Give uh, either CA or modders, please give me our Chaos lieutenants. Anyways, back to Tamarcon's chieftains. Let's look over, over this image. So he looks like Kaisk the Befouled is his first chieftain. So so he's like not a legendary hero, but he's in this mechanic. I don't know. Well, he's got a different icon than the other chieftains. So I, I'm not... Yeah, maybe he's, he still works as a legendary hero for uh, all of Nurgle and maybe Warriors of Chaos. But also for Tamarcan is somehow integrated into this uh, mechanic. So then it looks like after Kai's the Befouled, we have uh, a Nurgle-focused Warriors of Chaos, like a Chaos Lord of Nurgle. We have a Famir. <laughs> that was unexpected. That's awesome. Then we have a Werekin. Then we have a Bray Shaman. Then we have uh, a Chaos Dwarf uh, Sorcerer. Dude! That's awesome! And you can purchase units are recruited from the Chieftain Units recruitment panel. Oh my gosh! So each one of these Chieftains is going to have different recruitment panels. So you can maybe get like Norskin, uh, Beastman, Chaos Dwarf, Wars Chaos units, for depending on which Chieftain you have as the, as the Lord. Oh, that's so... So cool! Okay, Act, uh, Chieftain Abilities activate Chieftain Abilities to give powerful bonuses. Enables attrition for enemy armies in Kaisk's current armies. So, uh, so, so, right there, it sounds like Kaisk the Fouled is a lord. I'm s this is so confusing. <laughs> Any armies? Oh, in the current army. Okay, so just whatever army he's embedded to. My mistake. Um, chance of a plague spreading... Okay. I don't want to, like, look into, like, every single detail, but there's a lot of little things in this one image. Um, Chieftain Fealty. Increase the fealty of Kais the Befell via the following actions. Creating plague, defeating warriors, chaos, corn, slanesh scenes, run our skin battle. Oh, and then he progresses from pledge to a line committed and then devoted. Oh, and then you can get, like, different units for how much they're devoted. That's really cool. Now it's over on the left. He gets the Icon of Decay Talisman. Campaign movement range. Great. All right, well, let's read on before. <laughs> uh, with the body of Karaka Break Mountain as his own, Tamarkin's knowledge is matched only by his strength. And he will use both to gather the strongest warriors the world has ever seen and adopt them into his own twisted army, absorbing the many strengths of those that could not defeat him. Tamarkan can gain the fealty of many chieftains from various cultures of the Warhammer world and unify them under a single banner, his banner. Using his two key resources, dominance and fealty, okay, Tamarkan can decide how best to manage his acquired chieftains. Dominance, the main resource, is gained from winning battles. This must be spent to acquire chieftains, activate their abilities, and add their units into his recruitment pool. Oh, so it goes to his recruitment pool, too. The fealty of a chieftain is increased by taking action that said chieftain approves of, whether it be raiding sediments, raising cities to the ground, or wiping various opposing forces off the map. For example, if Tamarkan seeks a devoted chieftain from the Chaos Dwarves, he'd best express the same hatred for the Skaven as they do. So maybe you can get m more, so like the Chaos Dwarf uh, button, you can get multiple Chaos Dwarf Chieftains. It's just like, oh man, that's really cool if that's the case. Like it's not just one of each. Like Kaist of a is unique, obviously, but the other Chieftains in the panel, you can get m like those, are, it, oh, kind of almost like Vampiric Bloodlines too. Like five Lords that are like semi-unique. Interesting. Okay. Moving on. Uh, where was I? Uh, 
seek if for example if Tamar Gun seeks to devote a champion for like yeah yeah yeah. When the when their field team increases, Tamar King can reap the benefits and favor units and special abilities, culminating in a mighty thematic quest battle on his path to gaining boundless loyalty from these great warriors. It's only a matter of time. Kais the Befouled. Legendary hero, Kais the Befouled, Kurgan champion of Nurgle, serves as a living memory of what Nurgle's blessing can do to a soul. This mighty chaos champion gave everything to Nurgle, losing his voice to Nurgle's rot, and sacrificing his form so that he could stand alongside Tamarcan as a mass of corrupted flesh in service of the Lord of Chaos. I feel like I'm losing my voice doing all these videos today. <laughs> Being one of the first to join Tamarcan's banner, Kais swept through the chaos waste as his chief lieutenant, uh, commanding his own infested gang of horsemen with the <laughs> that's the game. I mean, it's, it's just funny. Uh, with the <laughs> with the rot knights, who we'll be meeting shortly in battle, Kais gets a tank, uh, much like his lord. His health regenerates in combat. In combat, whoa, nice. And thanks to his corrupted flash pass passive ability, he's granted an increased ward save when above a certain uh, health threshold, making him harder to fell. Oh, so the healthier he is. Oh my god, that's great. The healthier he is, the tankier he is. So, like, if he does drop to a certain point, you just pull him out of battle, get him to regenerate, and then he gets that ward save back. Oh my god. Well, no, he regenerates in combat, though. So you need to be in combat. So there's, like, a... So you get out of combat with this unit and go chew on, a like, a little chaff unit over here and regenerate and then come back with more ward save. There's some really cool mechanics with that. Uh, always mounted. Oh, yes! He's always mounted. Yeah, I wanted that as well. Always mounted atop a rot beast. Kaisk has access to Befouled Charge, a passive that triggers when charging, of course. Granting himself and nearby allies increased speed and an increased charge bonus while stripping the enemy of their charge defense versus large attributes? What? Oh, Kaisk is gonna be sick, dude. Oh, I can't wait to have like the little like in my Tamarcan army, my little contingent of like rot knights with <laughs> Kaisk at the at the helm. Oh my god, that's so cool. Okay. Plus, with his sword of filth item, Kaisk can spread decay to those he strikes. Okay. Oh, okay. Afflicting them <laughs> with decreased. Melee defense and armor. Spread the curse in his name. That's so. Oh, I'm so. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh my god. I'm, <laughs> I'm like maybe. I'm like maybe more excited for Geist than I am Tamarkin. You know, when I was back in some of my early predictions, like. Kaisk is not somebody like a bunch of <laughs> the bigger YouTubers talked about. That I was like. Yes, I will ring that bell. So it's just, I don't know, it's just so good to see him. Uh, okay. So, Chaos Lord of Nurgle. Uh, I don't necessarily love the model. I mean, with both the Chaos Lord of Nurgle and the subsequent Chaos Sorcerer of Nurgle here, uh, looks like they didn't really go the route of something unique and cool like the Exalted Hero of Zinch. We saw in the Shadows of Change update. Uh, yeah, these, uh, they, I, they're okay. I'm not, like, super disappointed, but I'm definitely a little. Something a little more unique would have been nice. But anyways, Chaos Lord of Nurgle, having earned the great favor of the Lord of K, the Chaos Lord of Nurgle stands as a generic lord to the Chaos God with skills only held by the very best of Chaos Warriors who leave nothing but rot in their wake. With a sword, shield, and a variety of mounts, oh, that's what I like to hear, at their disposal, the Chaos Lord... Please tell me what kind of mounts. The Chaos Lord of Nurgle leads as a durable and beefy warrior with an increased health pool as a debilitating unit. The Lord inflicts poison damage and fear upon the enemy while buffing nearby troops by spreading leadership and melee damage and reflection. Ooh, melee damage reflection bonuses to them with rot or die? Nice! But who could forget the weapon he seeks? The Father of Blades, rumored to be the first sword ever forged, is an active augment that the Chaos Lord of Nurgle can acquire to increase his armor piercing damage and reduce the melee attack of nearby foes. Okay, oh, well, that's, that's cool too. Oh, dang. I really wish they had said what mounts. 
Um, maybe it says it further. I don't know. Chaos Sorcerer of Nurgle. Powerful spellcasters capable of harnessing the raw winds of magic have found themselves at home with the Lords of Decay's troops as the Chaos Sorcerers of Nurgle, a new generic hero. With access to both the lore of Nurgle and the lore of death, and like the many units of Nurgle before them, these debilitating casters boast poison attacks and the fear attribute. They also serve the armies of Nurgle as healers, with access to various means of regenerating their allies, making them a vital asset on the field. Uh, as Legend of Total War said, <laughs> this Chaos Sorcerer of Nurgle is going to be far better for the warriors of Chaos than <laughs> Nurgle himself. Nurgle race, because that means you can get a hero, uh, a, a healer, in every army with a hero. Uh, moving on, Pestigors, uh, blessed since birth by Nurgle. The Pestigors of disease and pestilence serve their god with their trademark vigor of their fellow beast skin, alongside the infested, oozing, bloated skin from the mark of Nurgle. Yep, pestilence. Okay. Uh, in the heat of battle, uh, as well as debilitating their foes, Pestigors stand firm with their own durable skin and muscle. Sporting a high health pool for an infantry unit, with their weapon of choice, a two-handed great axe, the Pestigors are masters at smashing through armor, piercing it with a single strike. So, lots of AP, cool. It's pondered that the most high esteemed of Pestigors are blessed with a mutation. Here we go. This is like the Arcane Surge uh, equivalent. I knew, I figured they were going to do something like this. It is called the Tears of Nurgle. This passive chain hex okay, may only be triggered once, activating when with re within range of an enemy unit, resulting in infectious secretions from every orifice that slow the opposition down before spreading through their ranks. This makes them a prime candidate for vanguard deployment. Uh, another intrinsic trait of the Pestigors, obviously, they don't follow the pack, they lead it. Okay. Resulting in a... Okay, so, passive chain hex. That's, that's cool. And you, with the vanguard deployment, you get that on the enemy early, and then you, then the other troops come in. Cool. Uh, plague ogres, perhaps taking inspiration from the visage, visage of their commander, Tamarkan, the plague ogres, are twisted amalgamations of a once ordinary ogre with both body and mind contorted by the blessings of Nurgle. Joining Tamarkan in his pursuit of the Empire, plague ogres are the brutish humanoids that fell in battle at his hands before accepting the Lord of Decay's power. In return for their lives, they grew fat with infestation and disease. Serving Nurgle as sluggish yet durable infantry, the Plague Ogres seek out large enemies with their, with either their giant blades or great axes to slice them to ribbons. They're built for punishment. Um, so basically you Ogre Bowls, uh, with the Mark of Nurgle. Nothing, they're, they're not like super unique. They're cool. This is a good addition. It makes sense a long time again. Uh, well, the, the Great Weapon I think might be unique. I don't, there's not an Ogre there's the Iron Fists, the regular Ogre Bowls. Okay, what's the other one? It's the du it's dual weapons. So now they the, yeah, gives uh, Ogre Bowls a uh, great weapon variant, besides just the Mark of Nurgle. So that's something. Uh, Rot Knights are one of the select few Chaos Knights blessed with the Mark of Nurgle and the power to ride Rot Beasts into battle. Although the Chaos armor they wear has grown rusty with time, the Rot Knights, a new monstrous cavalry unit for Nurgle, can still take a beating, sacrificing some of their speed for thicker skin with increased health, defense, and regeneration abilities. So, like, sort of like the, uh, what are they called? The, oh my gosh, the skull juggernauts. Corn. What are they called? You know what I'm talking about. Like that, but bigger, slower, regenerating. Probably don't hit as hard. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, their models look great. I can't, I can't tell, like, I, I gotta see how they are in it, like their animations of battle before, but the, I mean, the models look great. Um, the goal of a Rot Knight is to lock down large targets on the battlefield, so anti-large, and shred their health thanks to their giant claws and a one-handed glance. 
delivering the potent anti-large attacks. With reg regeneration, the Rot Knights have a weakness to flame, but can regain their health over time and enjoy an increase to their melee defense when in the heat of battle. Bile Trolls. Under the shadows of the Chaos Wastes, Nurgle set its sight on these trolls, infecting their flesh and burrowing deep into their guts, gifting them with a blessing that should have consumed them. What remained was a bulbous monstrosity, a bile troll, endlessly eating itself alive from the inside out, only to regenerate and devour itself once more. This blessing is a boon to their inherent... inherent... yeah, I read that right. Passive regeneration combat, letting them shrug off wounds... Ooh, passive regeneration... oh, so it got like Kaisk. Passive regeneration combat. Letting them shrug off wounds as they strip their own damaged skin and replace it anew. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> so Nurgle. With poison attacks on their side, the vile trolls can strike fear in any foe they approach and can okay and can pierce straight through their armor with their one-handed blade. With all that infestation going on, beneath, here we go. Beneath the surface, the bile trolls can expel it with a corrosive bile hex effect. What? Softening the armor and flesh of their opponents and plummeting their victim's melee defense for an easy kill. Share their curse at your own risk. What do they mean by hex effect? I definitely was looking for like a bile, like bound ability or a missile attack. Does this mean they like, maybe they have like an animation in melee combat where they're just like spewing bile on nearby enemies? Uh, I don't know if I like that. I thought, ugh. Well, I, well, we'll have to see the animations and how it plays in the game, though. I'll reserve judgment until then. Uh, Toad Dragon. The true horror of Nurgle doesn't just lie within the bellies of its rotten soldiers, but also with the reptilian nightmare that often dwells in the northern wastes of the known world. The Toad Dragon, a rare sighted monster for Nurgle, brings a thoughtless level of hunger and violence to anything that crosses its path, melting flesh with its breath or squashing victims flat with its weight. With the help of its cruel anatomy, the Toad Dragon swipes through armor with its thick claws and lashes out at its targets with its proboscis tongue, snatching them from their hiding places and re reeling them into its gaping maw. Those, however, are the lucky ones. This large hulking creature specializes in smashing through even the most compact of formations and holds its place within Nurgle as their largest most expensive unit to date. <laughs> with, with heavy missile resistances, the Toad Dragon borders on unkillable, but it's what lies within that truly makes it something to be feared. With its active ability, unspeakable foulness, the Toad Dragon spews forth a blast of flesh-rotting horror, delivering explosive damage and inflicting poisonous burns on its victims as their skin slips off in sheets and their organs turn to liquid. Ha <laughs> Decay is but the least of their worries. Uh, give like something like that to the bile trolls. I'll, I still have to just reserve judgment. But <laughs> Dude, that sounds sick for the Toe Dragon. Alright, so going from the DLC stuff, now we're uh, the blog wraps up with just talking about a whole, you know, overall rework for uh, Nurgle uh, with its, like, Nurgle legacy updates. Um, just talking about how they've taken feedback. Uh, plagues. Plagues have been completely reworked from the ground up, impacting Kugath, Plague Father, Festus, and Tamarkin. Here's a sneak peek at the new plague system. And... Uh, yeah, it looks good. I don't have a lot to say. There's, you know, it, I, I got to get our hands on it before this one image alone doesn't necessarily tell us how it works fully. But, uh, you know, it looks more in depth, which is good. What is the issue with the current system? The problem with the original system for plagues is that it was completely solvable. As a player, there was an objectively strongest route to take and no, no need to deviate from it. Uh, to maximize the benefits and minimize the drawbacks. This took away from the Nurgle fantasy of experimenting with disgusting new diseases that we want players to feel. So yeah, going more in depth. What are we changing? Plague systems now exist within a web. 
with certain symptoms connected to each other, letting you combine three of them to create a plague. Okay, oh, okay, I like that. The UX has been redesigned to better showcase how this plague will affect both Nurgle and non-Nurgle factions, positive for Nurgle, negative for everyone else. The symptoms locations within the plague web will shift with every three plagues, so your first, oh, your first plague may allow for a connection between symptoms granting casualty replenishment, growth, and recruitment health, but on the next cycle, those symptoms could be nowhere near each other and you'll have to conjure new plagues from what's available to you. As a result, special combinations have been removed. All right, all right, that sounds a lot better. We're introducing a new type of symptom, blessed symptoms. These are assigned randomly and change with every plague cycle and a symptom, while blessed has its effect doubled. Ooh. Plagues can now be mutated with increased effects, uh, increasing the spread chance, extending the duration, and much more. Plagues now have an immunity period so that those on the receiving end of being plagued aren't constantly under its effects and have a respite between bouts. Kugath Plague Father benefits greatly from the system. He is uniquely able to have many blessed symptoms active at once, allowing him to conjure much more fearsome disease diseases than his peers and decimate the world with unholy infectious combinations. <laughs> Helman Gorse is going to wish he'd set up shop elsewhere. Well, I'll hold you to it, CA. <laughs> we'll see. But it sounds a lot better. It sure does. We'll, we'll see how it works once we get it in our hands. Cyclical buildings. What is the issue with the current system? Uh, Nurgle's unique uh, cyclical buildings has led to some unique and thematic gameplay strategies when it comes to recruitment, but we felt it had a negative impact on their economy and defensive capabilities. What are we changing? Military buildings are still cyclical, good, but all remaining buildings, all remaining buildings are now static like the other factions in the game. Okay, military buildings now cost infections instead of treasury to help with managing the choice between improving infants infrastructure and recruiting forces. We have done an economy pass on the buildings following this change to help with Nurgle's difficult financial situations, allowing players to choose the treasury building rather than having their economy gain split between all chains. Resource buildings have had uh, have had effect overhaul. Okay. Cult buildings have undergone an effect pass. The remaining cyclical buildings can now be rushed by spent Spending infections. That's cool. Oh, oh, interesting. So like instant construction almost with chaos doors. So that, that definitely makes them a lot easier to use. I like that a lot. What's the issue with the current system of recruitment? Nurgle's unique recruitment is currently too punishing for the benefit of instant recruitment. What are we changing? Recruitment cost and recruitment health are now tied to the Nurgle corruption level of the province. That's good. That the, that the military force is recruiting in. 30% health at zero corruption, 60% health, and negative 50 uh, recruit cost at 100 corruption. <laughs> I feel like it would, uh, I'd like it to be a little more. Like, um, I don't know, let's say 40, 80, personally. Like 40 at zero corruption and 80% at uh, 100 corruption, but that is just me. I think that's just a little low, those numbers. Uh, with the addition of Russian construction, cyclical building should, be, should help with filling up recruitment pools in the early game. Technology tree. What are the issues with the current system? Nurgle's technology tree is lacking clear direction and was uh, designed too heavily around Kugas Realm of Chaos experience. Doi. What are we changing? Nurgle's Technology tree is now split into two distinct groups. Cool. One focused on military and the other on campaign faction bonuses. Cool. The layout has also been reworked to make it clearer and easier to progress through the technology tree. Great. Awesome. Good to hear. Um, army abilities. What are the issues with the current system? Previously, Nurgle gained army ability points based on the amount of damage taken. We felt that this didn't reward Nurgle players enough and seemed like a consolation prize for losing units. What are we changing? Nurgle <coughs> now gains a passive income of army ability points for every enemy unit in the battle map that is currently being affected by a negative effect or debuff. Nice. That's a good change. 
This plays into Nurgle's playstyle of spreading debuffs and contact effects and makes them even more desirable for both campaign and battles. We're confident that these changes are going to enhance the Nurgle experience for everyone who plays them, whether you're scorching the lands with disease as Kugath, harvesting souls of Nurgle uh, for Nurgle as Festus, or gathering an army of chieftains as Tamarkin. And just maybe there's one more legendary lore of Nurgle waiting in the wings, ready to be unleashed in update 5.0. But for now, I reckon we've cataloged enough plagues to keep even Grandfather Nurgle himself happy. So let's see what we've got coming next. I don't know why they're tiptoeing around it, like giving a hint as if we don't know it's Epidemius. You know, he's in the trailer. Um, as far as I know, the big two YouTubers were allowed to talk about him. Um, like that, uh, the partner program people. Um, so... I don't know why they're tiptoe, tiptoeing around it still. Um, personally, I would have much rather have um, Marius Lightdorf as the FLC Lord, or maybe even Joseph Bugman uh, for dwarves, or if we're going, you know, Nurgle, there's... <laughs> I just think there's better characters. I mean, Gunrod Spume and Glockin are more end times, so they'll probably be down the, down the line. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to spend time on Epidemius. I just, he's so, <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's an accountant. I, I mean, it just, like, that's his whole thing. Uh, I mean, like, if you give him, like, a molluscoid mount, that would make him a little cooler. I digress. Up next, for more details on Tamarkan the Magalord and to see this infested commander in action, keep an eye on our official channels for our... First Thrones Decay Showcase will be back next week with a look at the Empire's latest, Elspeth von Draken, before tackling the dwarfs, Malachi McKyson, the week after that. And wrapping up our reveals the following week by delving into some free additional content arriving in 5.0, including the faded Nemesis Crown and a legendary lord, which is, again, it's an Epidemius. Duh. What? Why are we... <laughs> I don't know. The Nemesis Crown, though, I haven't really talked about, and I... I don't really have much to say about it, but having, like, a Sword of Cain level item um, more in the center of the map, the old world, is going to be awesome, you know, and just, I hope at some point before the game ends we get a third item of that level over in the east side of the map, probably like a Cathayan item or something along those lines. Um, there's plenty of real world um, <laughs> mythologies that you can pull from for that. Uh, but anyways, please let us know how you're feeling about this one and head to the Total War Discord and CA community to make your voice heard on all things Total War. And as always, you can expect the full suite of patches for update 5.0 the day prior to launch. See you on the battlefield, the Total War team. So that's it. That's the whole blog. Um, looks awesome. Uh, the Tamar Cannon is looking great, especially the Chieftains thing. Uh, not a huge fan of the the Chaos Lord and Sorcerer of Nurgle, their aesthetics. Um, but everything else is like just awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. But yeah, I may do um, uh, an Empire uh, blog. I'm sure I'll do an Empire blog video and a Dwarf blog video when those come out. Um, otherwise, I don't know if I'll do any videos. We'll see. Um, I, I might do a video just for memes. Um, we'll see. Alright, see you guys soon. Bye-bye.